in uniform circular motion, uh, we have a particle that follows a circular path at a constant speed. We have two ways of describing that motion. One is with linear variables, and one is with rotational variables. For the linear variables, the position is given with the path along uh, the curve, the path along the circle. S, which of course is its linear speed times the time. Which brings us to the next line, the linear speed being the derivation of that position. We can also give it as a rotational entity with the angle along the circle, which will be equal to the rotational speed omega times time. Omega being the derivation of the angle all the time. Now, if we consider the time it takes to go around uh, one time as the period, capital T, we can say, oh, okay, so if my uh, linear speed is constant, I have to go around once. So a total path of T pi r, one circumference, all the period which will give me the linear speed. Similar for the angular speed, I can say, okay, go around once, is too high in radians over t. So as you can guess, we're gonna measure the angular speed in rads per second. The angle in rads, the linear distance usually meters, and then we get the linear speed as meters per Now, if you compare those two terms here, is there a direct connection between linear speed and angular speed? If you just look at these here. Yes, there is. So we have 2 pi r over t. If we have 2 pi over t, that means we can calculate the linear speed as the angular speed times the radius. This has worked out with the units. If you look at it, that's per second times the radius in meters, this means that times meters per second. So that is one of the three units that can appear and disappear. So again, yes, I do get meters per second. Now the next thing that I want to look at is the linear velocity. Which is a vector. So I will have to describe it uh, in I hat and J hat notation. So first I do have this e and d times, and if I look at my x component of the velocity, when I'm here, I have zero x component, and then at 90 degrees, I have my negative momentum x component at 180 at zero again, and at 270, I have my highest uh, possible uh, value. So if you think about what you do with the function to do that, and it will come up that it is sine of the angle that does this, the angle which we say is omega t. However, at 90 degrees, we are the negative values, we have the minus so pi hat plus, and for the y value at zero degrees down here, we have highest speed, and then we have zero speed at 90. Uh, negative speed at 180 and the positive and zero speed again in my direction uh, once you're at 270. So plus cosine omega times t j hat. Because now we can try to figure out what does the linear acceleration look like. Acceleration, the linear acceleration, is the derivation of the velocity of a function for time. So if I derive this equation for time, I should get an expression in i hat and j hat for my linear acceleration. So let's do this. V is remaining just constant. If I derive sine, I get cosine. Don't forget, in the derivation, comes omega. 
plus if I derive cosine, what do I get? I get minus sine j hat. Now let's rewrite this a bit nicer. I could say, okay, this is my v, which is omega r times the omega that I have here and here, so omega square r times minus cosine omega t i hat minus sine omega t j hat. So let's have a look what that actually would mean. So my acceleration has a maximum amplitude of omega square times r, and which way does it point to? If I look here at my position here, I would have cosine omega t, so minus one in x, and sine of zero. So here my acceleration is on this way. What about here? At 90 degrees, I will have zero for the x component, and I have minus one for the y component. This direction would be that way. Uh, if I'm here, I have minus cosine omega t. So if I plug in 180, I will get positive x component and again minus zero y component. And down here it will be what you said into the get minus zero for x and this time uh, plus one for the y. So the acceleration that we have is always pointing to the center of the circle. This is also why we call this a centripetal acceleration, of which the magnitude must be omega squared times r, which if I plug in this equation here for omega, gives me v squared over r squared, so that will give me 